Hi everyone, this is Ramaling Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is Stability Studies, a comprehensive approach for routine compliance. Let us see what the effective strategy is to address the routine stability study program to establish the shelf life of the product. The approach should be focused on the product life cycle approach. Before initiating the routine stability studies, it is necessary to complete the stress test at higher temperature, say at 50 degrees Celsius or at 60 degrees Celsius and humidity at 75% RH or greater than 75% RH to identify the potential degradation products which help to establish the intrinsic stability of the molecule or the product. Also, studies like oxidation, photolysis, hydrolysis across a wide range of conditions, etc. should be done. Photostability is also carried out to establish the photosensitivity of the product. If the product is established as a photosensitive material, it is necessary to have a packaging scheme that is light protective. For example, black polyethylene bags as primary bags and or secondary bags may be used. When there is a possibility of air ingress, which uh, which can have an adverse impact on the quality of the product. In certain cases, aluminum foil bags are also used in the packaging scheme. Now, coming to the routine stability studies, it is necessary to have these following test conditions. The accelerated storage conditions, long-term storage conditions, intermediate storage conditions, and alternate long-term storage conditions. Accelerated study is a short-term study with more stressful conditions. That means more than normal temperature and humidity conditions. This establishes the intrinsic stability of the molecule at routine possible stress conditions. Guideline says if there is a significant failure at accelerated conditions, it is necessary to carry out the study at intermediate storage conditions. And long-term study conditions are continued till the end of the shelf life of the product. If the intermediate conditions are considered for long-term st stability study, then there is no requirement to carry out the intermediate test conditions separately. For uh, more detail, details of, of, for all, on all these uh, studies, you can refer my earlier uh, videos on the same subject. You can also refer Q1A R2 guideline completely. Let us move forward. When to start accelerated study? For a new product, it is necessary to carry out the accelerated storage condition study. Then what is a new product? After successful completion of the benchtop synthesis of the product, the process would be established. Then the process is scaled up through a technology transfer document from the product development function or you can call it as R&D. It is necessary to initiate the accelerated study for a change in starting material or a raw material in the process also needs to be subjected to accelerated storage condition study. In this case, there is a change in starting material or any other material. The process is significantly changed. The potential characteristics may change significantly with a different imp impurity profile. So it is absolutely necessary to establish this fact. Now, for a change in the vendor of a starting material or a raw material with the same route of synthesis, it may be 
justified with a documented evidence to skip accelerated storage condition study. If the route of synthesis, that is ROS, is exactly same with that of the approved route of, route of synthesis with along with uh, the solvents and the impurity profile is same, this has to be established through a detailed document and statistical evaluation of the quality of data. With this kind of justification, you can skip the accelerated study. Now, for a change in major equipment or process, may be also justified scientifically with a document, documented evidence to skip accelerated storage conditions. For a change in the equipment or process also, if the equivalency with the earlier equipment and process is established and confirmed that there is no impact on the quality of the product, then the accelerated study could be skipped. Let us see how the long-term studies go on. After technology transfer, the first three validation batches have to be subjected to long-term stability study. Most of the cases for regulatory filing also, data from these three batches is very important. The testing frequency is every three months for the first year, every six months for the second year, and every year thereafter till the shelf life, till the end of the shelf life. Here there is one important point to note. How long the long-term studies can be carried out? We understood that it should be till the end of the shelf life. So, for example, if the product stability is within the acceptance criteria of the product after established five-year shelf life, shall we stop the study? Really, no. Because this is something like giving a death certificate to a person living in healthy condition. Then, the shelf life can be extended for some more years till it fails to confirm to specifications. Then we can consider that the product is dead. For many products, the shelf life can be extended beyond five years supported by stability data. Think over this. Some higher temperature climatic zones, regions such as that the intermediate storage conditions may be used as an alternative to long-term storage conditions. So depending upon the recommendations from various climatic zone areas, the long-term conditions may be chosen as 25 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius. The recommended strategy for routine study is that there should be a provision in the system or your stability studies SOP for a detailed discussion on the requirements to address the accelerated storage conditions when there is a change. So your strategy for routine study should include all these aspects clearly. Also, there should be a provision in the system for annual added batches. It is recommended that a review be made on all the batches manufactured during the year and look for any reprocessed batches and any reworked batches or any modified batches. One of this type of batches may be selected for annual add-on batches. The annual add-on batches for continued study on the product till the end of the shelf life should be understood with a focus on the product life cycle. You have to understand the product life cycle in a more comprehensive way. It should include, in addition to the routine manufacturing conditions, are there any batches for which reprocessing is done, or any re reworking is done, or any modifications done, etc. That means you have to select, if available, the add-on batch 
from any of this category of batches during the study period. If there are no such batches, you can select any routine batch. So there should be a provision in the SOP for review of the entire batches data to check for such incidences. The exact, this is exact meaning of the product lifecycle approach. Also, when evaluating the data for extension of shelf life, it is necessary to evaluate the data from the accelerated study for six months and the available long-term data. For details, try to read and understand fully the flowchart given in ICHQ1E. If you understand the flowchart, it is easier to understand the intent of the entire guide. You have to understand the words like statistical amenability, linear regression analysis, etc. So after the evaluation, a detailed report on shelf life extension has to be made. Then shelf life has to be extended as required and make statement on from which batch onwards the revised shelf life is applicable. It is not adequate if the product passes to specifications after each scheduled time station. The data has to be evaluated as described now. This is very very important point to note. So it is obvious that all these aspects should be included into your stability study program in a very very clear fashion. For new product along with accelerated storage study, it is recommended to subject the samples of product at intermediate storage conditions also. This will help to continue the study at intermediate storage conditions in case there is a significant failure in accelerated storage conditions. This strategy will help you to save some time when you initiate the uh, accelerated study and the intermediate study at the same time because you know you have the intermediate study samples handy when if there is a failure in the accelerated storage study so try to incorporate this paradigm thinking in detailed way into your stability study program or system for getting an effective monitoring of your stability program. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.